Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. And firstly, a big shout out to a happy new year to everyone. I hope you had a great night and I hope you are looking forward to another successful year in 2019. But before we hit 2019 properly, we have a episode to do and this is going to be the Japanese gardens in Monaco. Just below the area that we're working on with the casino area. This is going to be a superb challenge and I was really pleased with how this came out. Very unique, very different type of build compared to what we have done. So let's get into it. Let me show you how we did this. So the first job was to create the sort of roadway around this and there's a very unique traffic structure in Monaco and this is an example of one of them. For example, the bit we're working on here is actually an underground car parking lot. So I wanted to imitate the tunnel to make things realistic, but I also wanted to actually make this part of a road so we could see cars going down there because there's a lot of areas that at the moment aren't really having traffic along them. So I was thinking we'll add this in here and then perhaps in the future we can look to add one of the um, underground car parks, which I think should be functional as long as it's next to this area. So that'd be really nice to add in. Um, I always try and do the most realistic um, sort of traffic areas and making things do what they're meant to do in real life Monaco because then technically we'll have the same types of traffic, the same sort of um, issues I guess um, that Monaco actually has because you know the game's mechanics are pretty decent in that respect. Now whilst on the topic of transportation, obviously Monaco needs a lot of roads being put down but for you as the viewers, would you find it interesting or a little bit repetitive and boring if I did an episode purely on the infrastructure? So what I'm talking about is not putting down every single road in Monaco, but the foundations perhaps of one of the main areas that we're going to be working on in the future, showing you the road layouts and sort of how I implement that within the actual game itself. Would that be interesting to you? Because obviously it needs to be done. If it's not going to be of interest, I will probably do that sort of thing off camera so then we can concentrate on the actual nice detailing areas. But obviously the infrastructure is a very unique and interesting style to one build and two, I hope, to sort of watch. So let me know in, your, in the comments section below if you think that would be a worthwhile video to do. Otherwise, like I said, as I have done in a few other the videos, I'll keep the, um, the whole layout of roads and dropping down roads, etc., uh, to a, an episode of my own in that respect. But with that in mind, I'm thinking forward to 2019. As I said previously, I really want to get back into the building of Monaco and I have got a bit more spare time as mentioned. Um, you may have saw the recent live streams I did on both Twitch and YouTube, which was pretty much doing what we're doing today. I think I actually did the majority of this layout um, on live stream, which was really fun. I had a great, great um, feedback from a lot of um, people within the chat and uh, it's those sort of situations that really make this game even more enjoyable to play. Um, I mean, there's a lot of times where I'm building on my own, I'm thinking, should I do this or should I do that? Or which one looks better? Um, so it's always nice to get some information from the outside world, from you guys, the viewers who enjoy watching me build. So that's something I want to continue doing a bit more of um, live stream wise, but also it's going to help me get together and put down more videos because if I'm doing it via live stream, I'm recording as I go and effectively you're watching the next um, next video. I mean, other than that, I do like the idea of having these videos held back so you don't see anything apart from the occasional teaser on um, Twitter. Um, but again, I'm open to doing some more live streams because I do love the interaction. Um, it's a lot different than getting the feedback on the comments below because it's direct, it's instant. Um, but by all means, keep those comments coming in YouTube. I really do enjoy replying to them and reading your thoughts and comments on the build itself or sort of how you're getting on with your own. So with that in mind, I will be obviously keeping Monaco as my main project, but also I'll be starting work very shortly on a new series. This series will be, um, I'm, it will be obviously a main series. I'm gonna still keep it sort of highly detailed, not probably as detailed as Monaco. Um, and it's going to be an also another kind of recreation of another location. Um, but the only tease I'm going to give you is it's going to be very close to my home. It's going to be a UK build. So I'm extremely excited to once again work on some uh, 
some British building because it's what I know so well. Um, the location that I'm going to be building is something very close to my heart. It's somewhere I've been many times and it has a lot of memories in that. So I'm really excited to start working on that. I'm probably going to start doing so in the next month or two. You may see a teaser sort of February, March time. We'll see how we get on. But um, that's the plan for 2019. Obviously, to keep Monaco going. Not sure if it'll be completed in another year's time. You, you can never tell of these projects. Um, obviously, I want to get to a stage where we can have the majority of it down. And I think there will be um, episodes that won't be as detailed as we have done because of the ability of the game and the mechanics within the game will not allow us to detail at this extreme for every segment within Monaco. So there will be some episodes that won't be as highly detailed, but that's the sacrifice we have to take when working on this sort of a project. So um, I'm not sure where we're going to head next in terms of the next episode, but feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you would like to see next in Monaco because we are going to build the whole of it. That's the plan. So we're going to work on every segment. So let me know what you would like to see next and we'll see if that fits in with the timescales. So that was the easy part of this episode. We've laid down the foundations um, and now it's time to work on this fantastic location, the Japanese Gardens Monaco. These are absolutely beautiful gardens and obviously I've not been there before but the pictures and videos I've seen of this area are remarkable. For a small area they have really excelled themselves in the design and the sort of arrangement of these, uh, these gardens. They are truly sensational. And obviously a very difficult project for me to work on because I need to try and replicate these to the ability of what they actually look like in real life. So it's going to be a huge challenge. I do enjoy doing some foliage, but I've never done a Japanese garden. So I must admit, I did spend a lot of hours researching into the type of flowers and what there is around this Monaco Japanese garden location. Um, and it's going to be a bit of a struggle because there's not a lot of foliage on the workshop that are identical to what there is in Monaco. Obviously it's going to be very difficult to do so. There's a lot of very unique flowers and around there etc. But I managed to select a good sort of 10 to 12 types of trees and flowers that did fit the theme. And I'm hoping you guys will agree with me that the flower choice at the end in the cinematics really do work for this location. But not just the flowers, the actual buildings and walls, for example, one workshop, these ones really do work well. And they are, strangely enough, very, very similar to what there is actually in Monaco. So a huge shout out to anyone who has been building these Japanese type buildings, uh, walls, etc. Because they fit perfectly for this design. And yeah, it's really been a big help for me to do so. Now you're probably wondering what I'm doing on screen now and I did actually find a new technique um, that I hadn't seen before that what you can do is if you do a procedure object decal for example these grasses you can actually highlight the um, the editing mode and actually move the nodes to actually change the shape of the area so as you can see there in the corner I managed to change a circular shape and cut the edges to make them clean and that just works so well and it's a technique that I've not seen anyone use before and it's one that I just happened to stumble across. 
Um, and it's one that I'll be using quite a lot now because you'll see a bit later on in the episode, I use that quite a lot around these path areas. Um, I didn't do it all on camera because it's um, a little bit, um, well, a little bit boring to watch, obviously, but you can see the concepts of how I achieve that. And it's certainly a, an idea that I think will be very useful to use. And you'll see it again here with the dirt highlighting the corners and then just, just basically shaving them off. Um, and it allows me now to place these down. And again, remember, procedure objects are not adding to the prop count. So those mass of, um, of um, mulch, dirt, whatever you want to class it as, have not added to my prop count, which is, which is fantastic. Obviously, the frames do get affected still, but it just really helps this area. Um, and it just, I just like the look of it. Um, it really does help the area really come to life. And again, a very useful technique, which I'm hoping some of you guys can also utilize in your builds when creating. And that's obviously one thing I do really love about this game. Every time you play, you're gonna learn something different, whether it's a new style of a build that you're working on, a new area, a new section, you know, a new type of location, for example. You're always learning ways of making your builds that much better. And as I say, it's one of those games where no one is better than someone else in that respect. Everyone's vision of something looks different to someone else's. It doesn't mean one's better than the other, but my word, the amount of new techniques that have been shown on the workshop and on YouTube channels um, are just ridiculous. And we really can learn a lot from each other. And that's what I love about this uh, community. It's the only community that really does help other people out. It's not a case of, oh, I can do this better than you. Everyone is there to help each other out and really get the most out of this amazing game. There's a lot of very unique areas also in this Japanese garden, and one of which is this very unique little walkway across the water. And I wanted to try and imitate that as best I could. And I actually found these benches on the workshop, which work pretty nicely to be fair. Um, you'll see on the screen, the top left hand corner, what it looks like in real life Monaco. But I think this didn't turn out too bad in terms of the, uh, the assets I had to play with. Um, obviously we're not going to get anyone walking across this but it's all about the aesthetics and making things look nice so we had to try and level this up with the water and water has always been a weak spot for me when it comes to working within um, city skylines I've always had issues getting to the right level especially when making ponds etc but this one I just about managed it I think you'll see later on in the episode um, how it all looks and we do end up using some rocks to fill in some of the gaps, etc. But I wanted to try and use real water in this um, pond because there are some nice decals out there, but you're never ever gonna get a realistic look if you don't use actual the water mechanics within the game. And the water mechanics within this game are sensational. And I do have a very nice tip at the end of this episode, or towards the end, where we actually change the color of the water because the water itself at the moment is obviously imitated by the gravel effect and it's a little bit too light and clear for my liking. The Monaco water, as you saw in the image earlier, is a lot deeper green. So we will work on that a bit later on. There's a little technique I have used to, um, to create that. So we'll go through that a bit later on. But what I'm doing here is there is obviously parts of the Japanese garden that are actually walkable through the water and we can't do that with the mechanics of the game it's been possible to create a um, little island area that people can walk across and the way that the terraforming works in the game doesn't make things simple um, so all i'm pretty much doing is using the plopal asphalt um, in this 
instance, I'm actually using it via procedure objects so I can actually morph the, the shape of them and make them a bit more abnormal than just a standard square. And then what we'll do is we'll be putting some rock, rocks around this and it just is a nice way to make it look like there's a little pathway over the water without actually doing any roads, etc. Because if we added in some of the, um, well, a small road, for example, it'll really mess up the pond itself and the water mechanics. So that's a little cheap way to get around that. And you'll see once I start placing these rocks around, it looks a lot better than it does as of right now. Um, the rocks sort of hide the ugliness and the shapes and make it look like it's still meant to be there um, because this area is a very sort of rocky, pooly area um, with all these flowers around it. So I wanted to try my best to imitate that and that was the best way that I found after hours of experiments um, to do so. So I'm really pleased with how that came out at the very end. And there's a lot of different flower arrangements in this area and one of them is actually in some flower pots in the water so i wanted to try and imitate that um, but there was one thing in my mind i really wanted to sort of make the pool area pop out a bit more so i wanted to think of a way of doing so and in the end i actually used the monaco walls as a sort of boundary barrier around the um the main um, pond area and what that does in my eyes is it sort of really pops out and it shows that this is the water level this is the walkway for the path and it kind of separates the two out and just makes it sort of pop out a little bit better um, without this it felt that everything was all sort of as one and you couldn't really tell where the path finished and where the actual water was which I know is a bit more realistic I guess but the way that it comes across in the game didn't quite suit what I wanted to do so that was a little technique to get that looking a bit more pretty and a little bit more of a, of a pop to show what it's actually meant to look like. And now what we're doing now is just sort of placing down the foliage and like I said there was a good sort of 12 to 15 types of trees that suited the area. A lot of the area around it isn't as it is in Google Maps as of today um, which is obviously acceptable in my eyes. It's not going to be something we can copy like for like um, and because we also have built up artificial um, planters here. We can't put plants in at the right level. Some of the plants fall through, um, which helps us out in some respects, but others it doesn't because I wanted to try and imitate this main section and it to be a little bit lower in terms of its height of the trees. But after I finished it, I was quite pleased with how it came about. So in the end, I left it as it was. And I started off mostly with the green trees and I just wanted to add a bit of colour in there. So we added some of the purple trees in there as well. And going back into the main park itself, we um, I wanted to try and put the grass and the, the sprites down because they really do pop. And it is this this area is a lot of grass and sort of marsh area around the, the pool area or the pond area. Um, so I wanted to try and make that a little bit more realistic and doing so using those types of assets did really help the matter out and there's some really nice work on the workshop that I completely forgot about to be fair. Um, there was a lot that I already had in my um, asset list that I had kind of just completely forgot that they're there and they came out and worked really really well. Next I was trying to find some very small stones, stone or pebbles to create this sort of border um, entering the, the main garden. Unfortunately there wasn't anything like this on the workshop so what I actually did is use procedure objects and reduce the size of some rocks from the workshop itself. Um, so what I did is I individually reduced two sizes and um, ended up 
then putting them in a line, copying them over and going from there. And I think they look really nice actually, a very different type of border. Um, but on the topic of borders, what we end up doing is using these beautiful curbs um, and just dropping them down and just putting them on the edge. So similar to how we did it with the pool, we just use these borders just to create a barrier between the pathway and the uh, the main flower arrangement. And what I like doing now is I, uh, before I use these, is I actually man um, sort of off or off site, so to speak. I put down a M shape, so we've got sort of five or six different um, angles to work from, and then we just paste it down, and then you drop and drag with the Move It Mod tool um, to get the shapes in. It just means that it's a lot easier, a lot quicker to do bigger areas because everything's already there, there in itself. And you also see with these um, current plants, these are actually props. So what I was able to do is sort of give the imitation that they're actually hanging over the edge and into the water, which I thought looked really, really nice. Um, so all I did is just copied it um, and move it and just dropped it down via the page down button a couple of times to really recreate that look of things falling down. Again, obviously that's three props added to the prop count, whereas it could just be the one, but I am happy to, to do that now and again to um, create a bit more realism. Obviously you wouldn't do it to every single um, plant that you had. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I wanted to create a different type of color of the water. And the best way I found to achieve that is actually using the Plopola asphalt um, and alongside some of the moss decal. So I'm using the very green moss decal from the workshop and adding it on top of the um, Plopola asphalt. And the reason why I do that is because you can then higher or lower the decal, so to speak. So as you can see here, I had to manage it to a certain level to be able to get the uh, the right color green. You can obviously higher it or lower it to make things look different, etc. 
but that was how I managed to achieve that. Now you'll notice that this area here isn't actually like it is in real life Monaco. I wanted to change things up a little bit. I know I'm obviously imitating um, what I see, but sometimes there's situations where it's not possible. And I just wanted to use a bit of my imagination because I've never actually done a Japanese garden. I really wanted to have the traditional sort of Japanese garden with these um, sand beds with all the swirly lines and rocks in there. So I really wanted to use that sort of Zen garden approach. Um, and it was really, really fun to design actually. Um, I had a lot of help on camera. I think I remember doing this during a live stream. So I had a lot of feedback from people who was um, joined at that time. So thank you for everyone who was there to assist me on this because it was really fun. As I say, I had never done anything like this before. A Japanese garden for, for starters, I've never really even looked into the details behind how one is sort of situated and how it all works and comes together. But I really did enjoy this. This is really fun to do. Um, and the sand areas look really, really unique. Um, and it just breaks things up when you look at the final cinematics a bit later on in the episode, which I will add are probably some of my best cinematics to date. Um, you really see that they do really pop out this area. Um, we do also add in a little fountain a bit later on in the corner, which again isn't in real life Monaco, but I think it just worked nicely in that corner. And you know, I want to also put my own sort of flair into this. Um, we all know that it's not it's not possible to do things. 100% as it is in real life, but I think it worked out quite nicely. And on that note, that pretty much brings us now to the end of this episode. Like I say, stick around because there are some fantastic cinematics and I really do love the music choice. I really did enjoy finding these Japanese-esque soundtracks. Um, very different to what I normally do with my Monaco episodes, so it's really fun to do that. Let me know your thoughts on what you think of the episode and the music choice, etc. It's always good to hear your feedback on ways to improve the channel and improve the videos as well. Of course, I'm always here to listen to better the channel itself. So guys, remember, stick around. Make sure you're following me on social media because I'll be putting lots more teasers up. Again, also, as I mentioned earlier, we are also live streaming quite regularly now. Um, so if you don't follow already, it's either going to be um, scheduled onto the YouTube channel that you're watching this video on or via the Twitch channel, which is um, twitch.com forward slash um, pug gaming underscore YT. So make sure you hit both up. And other than that, guys, again, I hope you have a fantastic year. I hope you didn't get too drunk last night. But still, if you did, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and all the best.